the evidence that swallowing fluoride actually reduces tooth decay is very slight indeed. Um, most of the studies are poorly controlled. They don't control for all the, the factors. Uh, the studies were actually reviewed by the Cochrane Collaboration, which is the world-renowned uh, entity which reviews in a scientific objective basis the quality of studies done in medicine. And they concluded that many of the claims of fluoridation just don't stand up to scrutiny. There are, the studies are very, very weak indeed. There has never been a randomized controlled trial uh, on an individual level to demonstrate that swallowing fluoride reduces tooth decay. It simply is unscientific. And that's after 70 years, and this is their program, a government program. And they don't do the basic things that would be required if the FDA had ever been asked to approve fluoride for ingestion. The FDA has never approved fluoride for ingestion. It's never approved water fluoridation. Its position on fluoride is that it's an unapproved drug. We're putting an unapproved drug in the water. That's unacceptable. Now to switch to the health concerns, there are many health concerns. The only one that the promoters will recognize is dental fluorosis. But the rates of dental fluorosis have dramatically increased. 41% of American adolescents have some form of dental fluorosis. Not all in the very mild form, but 8.6% in the mild form, which impacts 50% of the enamel. 8.6% uh, in, the, in the mild. 3.6 in the combined moderate and severe levels. They said there was no severe, but they, the CDC says there is severe. 3.6%, and that's when 100% of the enamel is, is impacted. But the real issue is not the significance of dental fluorosis, whether it be a health or a cosmetic effect. It is the first sign that the child has been overexposed to fluoride. And if Cortland wanted to be scientific about this, if the New York Department of Health wanted to be scientific about this, the first thing that they would do is to see what the prevalence of dental fluorosis is in Cortland, Cortland City or Cortland County. If that prevalence is over 10 or 15 percent, let's say 15 percent, then you know that your children are getting enough fluoride to reduce tooth decay, even if you accept their their, um, their own hypothesis from 1945. They're getting enough, so no need to give them any more. You only increase the rates of dental fluorosis. Now, what I'm concerned about and what I talk mainly about tonight is that fluoride is neurotoxic. There are over 300 animal and human experiments which shows that fluoride can damage the brain. For heaven's sake, why would anybody uh, uh, sanction putting a known neurotoxic substance in, into the drinking water. Uh, we're spending millions getting lead out of drinking water. Why? Because it's neurotoxic. Meanwhile, the same agencies that are doing that are standing by and deliberately adding this neurotoxic substance into the drinking water. Over 100 animal studies, uh, over 30 studies which look at learning of animals impacted by fluoride, 50 out of 57 IQ studies shows that fluoride lowers IQ. Now, one of the key questions I asked tonight, and I've asked Stephen, um, sorry, Johnny Johnson before, here are the three, here are the list of references for the 300 studies that shows that fluoride is neurotoxic. 300 red flags. You show me the green flags which allow you to continue to say that the only health effect is dental fluorosis. How can you possibly, as a scientist, dismiss the neurotoxic effects of fluoride without even citing the literature? And the other striking thing, which goes hand in hand with that tonight, even though all of us were asked to produce studies, primary studies at 0.7 parts per million or whatever, which would demonstrate either the effectiveness or the harm caused by fluoride. I presented studies, I presented numerous primary studies. They presented practically no. I was counting. I couldn't hear one primary study. There was a reference to Heller. There was a reference to Brunel and Carlos, two dental studies, but no other um, citing of these studies. Just this blanket statement. There are thousands of studies. Well, that's not helpful for the, um, for the decision makers here. I did what I thought we were supposed to do, 
is I produced all the primary studies which I thought were important, and so did Bill Osmondson. And now I've just presented to the mayor the, all the references to those studies. So they asked for something, I gave it to them. The uh, proponents were asked the same things, they have not produced the primary studies because they don't have them. The science is on our side, the belief system is on their side. They believe, these, when these guys go to dental school, they're only given one side of it, they come out of it believing in fluoridation, and it's now almost a game for them to beat us. But I say this, hats off to Johnny Johnson and to Stephen Slot for coming here tonight and debating uh, two on two. They very seldom do that. They, they claim there is no debate. But today they had the guts to come and debate me, and I'm glad you captured it on video too.